Six violent attacks on police already this month. That's six violent attacks on police officers already this month in New Zealand, including one incident where an officer was almost strangled to death. It has the police association calling for every officer to be armed with a taser, saying having the weapons in their cars just isn't practical in many situations. Joining me now, New Zealand Police Association President Greg O'Connor. Morning to you, Greg. Good morning, Paul. OK, let's have a look at the numbers. There Sorry, are... Paul, can I, can I just add another one to that? I yep. just found out another one last night. A police officer had his arm broken when he was dragged behind a car in Auckland City. I only found out about that. Hadn't even been uh, publicised by police. So make that eight now. So eight this month. Whereabouts yes. did that happen? You say Auckland City. That, ha that... that happened in down downtown Auckland City. As I say, I only, uh, only was notified about that one last night, a couple of weeks ago. All right. So, I mean, the numbers are truly extraordinary, aren't they? And violent attacks on police officers are definitely going up. The numbers of tasers, 1,000. The numbers of frontline police officers, 5,000. What do you want? Do you want, do you want every police officer to be carrying a taser? Absolutely. Uh, yesterday's example, you can see a police officer by himself on a bike um, chasing a offender in a stolen car when he got involved in a scuffle, which he had to do, where the offender was obviously trying to get away. Um, had he had a taser, he wouldn't have had to do so. He was overcome by the offender, um, nearly strangled. Um, fortunately, um, help arrived, but uh, who knows what would have happened. Had he had a taser, he wouldn't have had to get into that situation. Um, he's adamant about that. It's time every frontline police officer who is likely to be involved in situations like this had a taser. You may remember up in Foxton earlier, uh, later um, last month. Um, there was an officer up there attacked, mm. um, badly beaten. Um, Foxton didn't have enough tasers to go around. Um, fortunately, the car that arrived did have them, but he didn't. This is another good example. Yeah. And, and the reality is, and I think everyone can understand this, you don't know when you're going to need the taser if you're a frontline police officer. It could happen at any time out of the blue. No. Well, that's dead right. Um, these situations, I mean, where we know we're going into a known risk situation, it's not a problem. We have firearms in the car, we have the taser in the car. Unfortunately, many of these beatings that our police officers are getting are, arriving, are arising from relatively innocuous pieces of policing, as do the shootings. Um, you might remember there were nine police officers shot in yeah. 2008, 2009. Every one of them came from a very ordinary piece of policing. All right, every time we talk tasers, obviously the people who disagree with them being around anyway are up in arms. We haven't got the time to go through it now, but I've looked at the stats. Tasers are very, very, very effective forms of policing. What you well, want... The reason the yep. Oh, so the reason they are so effective is because the anti-taser mob have created them into the bigger, a much better, more effective weapon than they are. Mm. Um, they believe that the, many of the criminals out there believe that um, when our officers pull them out, you know, they're really going to be die of this uh, electricity. Well, don't say any more. Don't there. say any it more or you'll throw them off the scent. Happen. We want the criminals well, to think that. Stop like talking. That. Stop, yeah. Greg. We want <laughs> the criminals to think that. That's why they're effective. Um, okay. the, the, the irony in this situation is the, the offender himself would have been injured less um, had the officer had a taser yeah. um, because at the end of the day, he had to be battened as well. So not only would the officer not have been injured, nor would the offender. Okay. What are you asking for? You're asking for 4,000 more tasers and you're asking for the rights for officers to wear them in their belt. Well, we don't need 4,000 necessarily because, of course, not all of those 4,000 are out at all the time. working at, yeah. one, at one time. Um, but what we need is that every officer out there um, who is likely to be confronted by a violent offender, which unfortunately is every officer who is out in public, um, needs that option on their belt okay. right now. And what's standing in your way? Because I, I agree, I think it's a good idea. What's standing in your way? Is it money or is it a, a school of thought that believes that this is not necessary? Oh, it, it's policy. When, when tasers were introduced, there was so much compromise because of the. it became politicised. You had a group of um, safe middle white people in Auckland mostly um, who are unlikely ever to be confronted by a violent situation who forced uh, police um, on, into these concessions when they were introduced. Um, the time now is for police to stand up and say, right, we've had them. Um, they are a very safe effective alternative to, as we saw, what we have to do now yeah. is get involved in the physical confrontation. And Greg, the numbers, as I say, the stats on tasers back up what you've just said. Um, right, you need more money and you need the will to pass this through. Do you think it'll be commonplace that uh, all officers will be carrying them soon? Um, Just a quick it will call. have to be. It will have to be. Um, yes, but the problem is, of course, this government's not giving us any money, so it's unlikely to happen until some, okay. some realistic financing of police. All right, good to talk about. Greg O'Connor, Police Association President, thanks for joining us again.